Thank you, Acting Deputy President. If my political party turned its back on our principles, our hard-fought and long-held principles, every time we came under some political pressure, then we wouldn't be who we are as a party. We wouldn't be the Greens. We would stand for nothing. If every time we came under political pressure to not do the right thing because of some kind of political strategy or because some stakeholders want us to delay legislation or it's all too hard, then we wouldn't be the Greens political party. What we would in fact be is the Labor Party. The Greens have campaigned on democratic, democratic electoral reform now for over a decade. Our party, which was formed 45 years ago, as one of its core principles, one of its four principles in its charter, is participative democracy. It's absolutely crucial to who we are as a party. We are also a party who represents our grassroots members, and our members write our policies and constantly work with the party room around, for our, our National Council, work with the party room in as to how we deliver these policies and these principles. And I've got to say that Looking at the opportunism in this chamber in the last couple of weeks has been nothing short of pathetic student politics from the Labor Party. Yeah. Pathetic student politics. Because I tell you why, unlike us who have campaigned on democratic reform, which gives every Australian the right to choose where their preferences go and removes the undemocratic backroom dealing. Unlike us, the Labor Party did support democratic reform in the Senate, but it supported it for longer than two and a half years, uh, Senator, through, through you, uh, Acting Deputy President, but because it doesn't suit their political timetable now, because they're not ready to go to an election, because they're not a real opposition, suddenly it's actually not even about whether they, uh, whether they do or don't support democratic voting reform. They want to defer it. They want us to have this debate after the day of a double dissolution passes. This is about a short-term political strategy for what is good for the Labor Party, not is what is good for the Australian people and for our democracy. And I've heard a lot of arguments in and we, the debate is coming to an end before we go in committee. But I wanted to read a document from 2013 relating to the tabling of the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters uh, following the 2013 election. The Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters has an important role after every federal election to review the conduct of that election and provide recommendations for the government and the parliament to consider. This interim report tabled by the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters focuses on Senate voting and party registration, which are issues that caused considerable concern in the 2013 election. I am pleased that JSM has tabled this report so that the policy and legislative decisions can be made to ensure the will of voters at the next Senate election is properly reflected by the senators who are chosen by the people. The primary concern of JSM has been to address the growing practice of preference harvesting by micro-parties, which has made Senate voting convoluted and confusing, and it has simply warped and manipulated the will of voters. Warped and manipulated the will of voters. Above the line voting and group tickets for the Senate were introduced in 1984 to address the high level of informal voting. Voters were required to number every square on the ballot paper and mistakes in preference sequences meant votes were declared informal. Since those reforms, the vast majority of Senate votes have been cast above the line. However, the emergence in recent years of bogus micro-parties 
who rely on multi-layered preference deals with other parties has distorted this above-the-line voting system, and action needs to be taken. Like the Joint Select Committee on Electoral Reform in 1984, the current Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters has been focused on making certain that the will of voters in Senate elections is not distorted or frustrated. This interim report contains what I believe are good recommendations. Recommendations that will lead to fair and effective reform of Senate voting and party registration. The committee's first recommendation for Senate voting is to allow preferences to be used by voters above the line and to make below the line voting less onerous by requiring voters to fill in only six or 12 squares, depending on whether it is a half Senate or a double dissolution. And then it goes on to explain what this means. Similar reforms were considered in 2009 in then government's electoral green reform paper. This is the Labor Party strengthening Australia's democracy. It is unfortunate, I believe, that those reforms did not progress at the time. And perhaps Senator Polly can tell us why that is the case through you, uh, Deputy President. Five years later, there was overwhelming evidence presented to the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters that the Senate voting system was in need of repair. The evidence is well summarised in Chapter 3 of the interim report. Above the line voting has developed to a point where bogus micro-parties engage what I call game theory and send preferences through a myriad of politically disconnected parties without any concern as to what a voter's real intention might have been. The gaming of preferences by micro-parties has bastardised the Senate voting system bastardised the Senate voting system, and the committee recommends reforms to above the line bloating above the line voting. I believe this should deal with the very difficult problems. And there's another page there. Now I am plagiarising uh, uh, Deputy President because these words weren't my own. These were the words of Senator Faulkner. These are the words of a Labor stalwart Senator Faulkner, who was, uh, as was noted by Senator Back, previously coined the grandfather of the Senate. Uh, well, I think that's a little bit unfair on Senator Faulkner because he's not actually that old. Uh, nevertheless, he made a significant contribution while he was here. These are his words from just a couple of years ago. And he talks about his own government in 2009 not acting on Senate voting reform. And he makes it very clear the system has been bastardised. So I am all for diversity in the Senate. I represent a party whose whole story is about getting diversity in the Senate. That is our life's journey to where we are today. But when we talk about diversity in the Senate, let's be very clear, we want diversity that is democratic. Diversity that is democratic. How is it that some people on a few thousand votes get elected when the same candidates in the same election on 100,000 votes or more don't get elected? That is not democracy. That is totally unfair and totally undemocratic. And I want to point out something about my political party, the Greens. Now, a few, the last week we were, the Senate was sitting, I was lucky enough to give an adjournment speech on a gentleman who was uh, one of the founding members of the Tasmanian Greens, which went on to be the Australian Greens and the Global Greens. And in fact, he was around the table when the United Tasmanian Group was formed. And the view of Jeff, Jeff Weston and his friends were that we wouldn't get outcomes in Tasmania to preserve the environment and the wilderness and what the original Greens fought on. We wouldn't get outcomes unless we formed a political party. It was a conscious decision that was made by a group of people. I don't think they necessarily wanted to form a political party, but they felt that their campaigning after the loss of Lake Pedder and the threats to the Franklin that they had to form a political party because the only way they were going to change the world, the only way they were going to change the world was to have a political arm to the environment movement and get outcomes. That was 45 years ago, Senator Polly, through you, Deputy President. That was 45 years ago that decision was made. And it's been there's been tens of thousands of people in Tasmania and around the country for my party who put their hands up to be candidates, yes, across a number of elections and probably hundreds of thousands 
of other people that have campaigned and put in endless hours to get my party where it is today. It's not an easy thing. It's not meant to be an easy thing. It takes time in a democracy for people to understand who you are and what you represent. And we are still continuing to try and let Australians know who we are and what we represent and why they should vote for us, just like any political party is. And to say that it's democratic for someone to get elected because they put their name on a group voting ticket or they formed a, put their name on a micro party and they've been part of a backroom deal that gets them elected to the Senate that doesn't represent the will of the voters. We've heard so much evidence about voters not knowing where their preference is going and being horrified when they found out, if, if they ever find out because the system's so complex. That's not democracy. I would like to see more diversity in the Senate. I would like to see more independence try to get into the Senate. That is good for democracy. Now, Senator Brown, who I replace, has always welcomed new participants, always in elections, because of the good that does to democracy. But the system has to be fair. And I don't think it's out of school of me to say you have to work hard to get your message across so people can understand what, what you are and who you represent, and they vote for you. And that's what we are talking about here today. We are talking about a reform that has been debated and looked at countless times over a long period of time. This is not a new issue. And the actual legislation that we'll be looking at, hopefully, later today, the actual legislation has been looked at countless times by countless committees. We've all got that information in front of us. Now, I think the real issue is that the Labor Party don't want an early election. They don't want an early election, and some of their stakeholders um, in the union movement, as, as, as we've all spoken to them, uh, don't want an early election either. This is, this is not an issue about timing. This is an issue about getting good reform through. The Greens have made it very clear we won't do anything to support an early election or a double dissolution. In fact, we've, had, we've said that the Prime Minister would be a coward if he called a double dissolution. He has a job to do, and I don't think he's done a very good job at all letting Australians know what he stands for and what his vision is for this country. He's got a lot of work to do to do that, and I think it would be very risky for him to call a double dissolution. Nevertheless, we'll be ready for it. We'll be ready for it if he does go down that road. But I don't think the Labor Party are ready for it. And I think that's what this is about. This is about delaying an election for their own political survival. Well, my message to the Labor Party is stop undermining progressive politics in this country. Stop attacking the Greens. Use your bucket of mud. Throw your bucket of mud at the people on the other side of the chamber, Senator Polly, through you, uh, acting de de deputy president, what you are in fact doing, and your stakeholders in are in fact doing, is undermining progressive politics in this country. And I'm sure uh, the prime minister and Chris, uh, Mr. Christopher Pine and others are, are, are laughing in their soup at what's going on in the Senate at the moment, seeing you attacking the Greens. That's exactly what they want, and you are giving them exactly what they want. You are giving them exactly what they want. You are giving them exactly what they want, Senator Polly, through you, Deputy President. What we need to do is actually get on with being a real opposition. Get on with being a real opposition. Like I said yesterday, go out and sell negative gearing and capital gains tax abolition. I back you 100 per cent on that. My party does too. We've long campaigned on this. These are the kind of reforms we need to be focusing on to the Australian people. We need to be making sure this government doesn't cut funding to the CSIRO and the best climate scientists in the world when it's most desperately needed now. And it's going to absolutely devastate the community 
uh, Senator Urquhart, Senator Polly, through you, Deputy President, where we come from in Tasmania. These are the things that actually really matter. We need to be out there making sure, making sure one, one thing happens. Making, one, making sure one thing happens. That is, at the next election, we get a democratic result that gets rid of this government. And the longer you spend throwing mud and playing student politics in this chamber, the less chance we've got of beating the coalition at the next election. The less chance we've got. So I would ask the Labor Party here today, go back and have a look from a few years ago at your support for Senate voting reform and ask yourself why you are really not getting behind this now. We know there's been significant conflict within the Labor Party over this. It's been in the papers. We know that you're very conflicted on this, like you are on lots of things. But if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And that is the most important thing to me here. You stand for absolutely nothing. And you certainly don't stand for democracy if you don't support Senate voting reform. That's what this is. And Senator Williams was right the other day when he exasperated, yelled, yelled to the roof in the Senate the other day, which was, was disorderly, I must say, uh, Deputy President. But he said, you hate democracy. You hate democracy. Well, it's actually not a bad, not a bad statement. Because that's actually what this is about. This is about getting a democratic voting reform. And I'm proud to be a member of a political party. Uh, and Senator Rhiannon, who's in the chamber with us today, has got this reform into the New South Wales Upper House, where it's been very well received. And I've spoken to her, and she said to me it was very difficult then too. The same kind of thing occurred, the same kind of base political debate. But it's been a good reform. And now we have the chance to get a good reform here in the Senate, and it's something that we can look back on as a legacy. Now, Senator Cameron came in here a few weeks ago and was having a go at the Greens and saying we're, we're, we're no good. We're no good in negotiations. We're not hard enough negotiators. You know, we got we got rolled on tax avoidance. We got rolled on pensions, apart from the fact that we actually got really good results for the Australian people. Uh, I think Senator Cameron's point is actually quite important in this debate. The strength of the Labor Party and those individuals in the Labor Party that are leading this charge against Senate voting reform, Senator Dastyari, Senator Conroy and Senator Wong, and probably Senator, Cam Senator Cameron himself. They're good at doing deals. They're good at doing backroom deals. They used, they're hard negotiators. And they've enjoyed this. They've enjoyed working with this crossbench, as I have. And this is actually about their power. This is about their influence, not about doing the right thing by the Australian people and actually giving our, our children a more democratic future by allowing them to dictate where their votes go in any election and stopping backroom deals, undemocratic backroom deals that don't reflect the will of the Australian people. That don't reflect the will of the Australian people. And if it takes the Greens, being the political party in Parliament, who have to be the real opposition, who have to have a spine, who have to stay true to their principles, who have to represent a grassroots movement of people that want to see participative democracy, who want to see peace and non-violence and justice, all the things that my party hold dear, then once again I'm proud to be part of that group that stands in the Senate and has strong principles. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything, Senator Polly. And I'm very disappointed that the Labor Party have taken, have taken through you, Deputy President, the Labor Party have taken a short-term populist and highly destructive, disingenuous, 
and dangerous approach to undermining what will be a democratic